Okay, good morning everyone. Uh, maybe before starting the course, uh, since tomorrow is actually a flexible day, right, for uh, a holiday for a double day, right? So, since you also have a, usually have a class on Monday, right, in the EA class, and I think uh, because I also will be away from uh, the, uh, the first week of October. So I think tomorrow, as at the usual time, from 8 to 9, we will have a class okay? tomorrow, uh, the same class. Uh, this is one hour. Okay? And then you will have additional VA uh, at October uh, 6. So, so tomorrow, uh, 23, so we have a class from 8, okay, just one hour, and then, oh, maybe, And October 6th, you have TA, okay. So you have one week, two times TA. Okay. So this will be, so, so Monday and uh, Friday, TA. So hopefully, I can get you at least uh, most of the chapter 11 okay, for this week and next week. So my, my, my plan is so let me let me give you context here because I will be Uh, or maybe, maybe let me write. So you, we have class, suppose, in four and five, right? So this is no class. Okay. But I will provide a video recording will be provided. Maybe just short video only, 20 to 30 minutes video. Uh, and then you have a TA class, uh, October 2nd and October 6th. Okay. So tomorrow, class in the morning. Okay, I hope you don't mind. After that, uh, just one hour okay, and then you can go after that. Okay. okay. So, uh, let me continue for a while. Uh, so yesterday, we have defined the, uh, the series, which we are going to uh, define through the S and the SN, or we say it with partial sums. Okay, now let's continue. Uh, suppose uh, the first n terms of series is, it means the, the partial sum, so let me write as n, is a1 plus a2 plus da, 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 plus an is equal to 2n 
over uh, 3n plus 5. So we, we define this um, as our um, Sn. Then sum of the series is limit as n approaching infinity of the Sn. And the idea is the same as the similar to the sequence. We need to define the series as the partial sum first. And then we can take the partial sum uh, like a sequence. Okay. And then you can see that this will be equal to 2 over 3. Okay, let me explain again. So tomorrow we'll have a class, one hour in the morning, 8 a.m., 8, 10 a.m. And then uh, October 4th and 5th, no class. But October 2nd and October 6th, you'll have a TA. And so hopefully the TA can uh, also explain about the uh, some exercise on uh, Chapter 11. Okay, now the next thing is some example that I would like to show. So suppose we have the series find the sum okay now to start the uh, the calculations because it's still in the definition of the infinite series then the first thing we need to do is we are going to write as partial sum okay? so write as partial sum and then use sigma and then let's say we are going to use i instead of n because n already def uh, already given as the series so start from i equal one until some n okay so we are going to exchange everything into i and then maybe we can show some few first terms so let's say when i equal one is 1, 1 plus 1, or maybe let me just write directly, uh, 1 multiplied by 2, and plus we input 2, and this will be 2 multiplied by 3, and then plus maybe one more here, it's 3 multiplied by 4, and then we can set up just the last one as n.
We can also set up the expressions. So if you remember, we can make it, let's say, i and an i plus 1. We can set a separation between these two, and we, we call this partial fractions, right? Okay, I hope you still remember how to get this. If not, we can start taking a constant a and b, right? And then we multiply and uh, divide with each. So we can write a i plus 1 it's, maybe let's just, just assume that it's plus first and then plus bi and then this will be equal to 1 okay so we have ai plus bi plus a equal 1 so we can factorize this and we know that a is equal 1, right? And a plus b is equal to 0. Okay. Why equal 0? Because there is no variable on the right side. So we can uh, figure out that a plus b is 0. So we know that b will be equal to negative 1, right? So that's why. This can be separated by Okay, so we have 1 over i minus 1 over i plus 1 okay. I think partial fractions are somewhat uh, useful So we are going to write this okay, for all the terms. Okay. So we are going to change the expression. So we can write that the Sn. This will be equal 1 over i minus 1 over i plus 1. Okay. So the structure will be a little bit changed. So if we try to input 1, we have 1 minus 1 over 2 and then plus we input 2 is half minus 1 over 3 and then maybe one more here we input 3 and we add until n and at the end we have 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1 so we have a special structure because if you see from the middle part, we can cancel this, right? We can cancel all the middle part. And you can imagine that if I, I compute this 1 over 4, the next terms will be having 1 over 4. So all the middle terms, including this 1 over n, it is also canceled, right? So all canceled and this. Uh, the expression was only 1 and then minus 1 over n plus 1. So we could write down here that it will be 1 minus 1 over n plus 1. Okay. This is Sn. So to compute this series, we are going to use the limit, right? So the limit Sn approaching infinity of the Sn is equal, this is 1 minus 1 
over n plus 1. The right side will be 0, right? This one will be 0. So this will be equal to 1. So what we did here, so let, let me express this is cancelling here, 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 and then there. So this is what we called the, the, the name is telescoping sum. So it's collapsing the structure, collapsing all the middle structure here. The slide you telescope, you you you, uh, you zoom in, and you you put all squeeze and then cancel the middle part. So that's the name, telescopes. Or you can also write the conclusions that the given series, uh, the given series or you can write its convergent. And you will see, since xn is equal to 1, if we compare an and sn, so let's say so if we if we compare the a n and the partial sums. So let's say a n. And s n is one minus. You will see that when we have the an, if we plug in one, it will be one over two. So let's say uh, let's say this is one. Okay. So this is the n. So we are going to compare an and sn. So equal 1 it's going to be here and if it's equal uh, 3 or if it's equal 2 it will be 6 so 1 over 6 so it's going to be down here and you will see that it's going to be touching the uh, or getting closer to 0 right. so this will be the an And for the SN, we start by taking 1, so 1 minus half is the same, right? The same here. And when we put 2, it will be 1 minus uh, 1 over 3, which means it's two, um, 2 over 3. So 2 over 3 is getting closer to 1, right? So it's maybe around here. And then we put 3, it's 1 over 4, so 1 minus 1 over 4 is 3 over 4, maybe getting closer and closer, and you will see that it is getting to 1, it's getting closer to 1.
So this will be So this is the the SN The sequence itself is getting zero, but the partial sum of that sequence, which means this Sn, we try to compute the S1, S2, S3, S, and, uh, and become another sequence. And we get that we can we can restructure and make it one minus one over n plus one okay, from from here. And you will see the difference. The An is getting zero. But when we use the partial sums, it's getting closer to 1. Okay, now we move to the what we call the sum of the geometric series. Okay, geometric series is a series that is restructured from the first of is A, and then you have something called the ratio or the R. Then you are going to multiply the first term to make it center, and then you multiply again with R. Multiply again to get it. So you have a R squared, a R cubed, and then you get the uh, the sum of the formula is the sum the sigma a r n minus one. Okay. So we call this a geometric series. Okay, sum of the geometric series. And you could imagine that if r is equal 1, so it would be a plus a plus a plus a, and you could imagine probably it will be infinite, right? It will be infinite, so it will be diverged. But if r is not equal 1, okay, so if r is not equal 1, and then we are going to, to take the structure of this of this series and make it into S. Okay, we, we, we make it partial sum, so we make our Sn. So we are going to take A, which means that, let me, let me write maybe to make it clear. Okay, S1 is A, S2 is A plus AR, S3 is A plus AR plus AR squared. And then suddenly you have the Sn from this structure, A plus AR plus AR squared plus dot 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 plus the A R n minus one, right? <coughs> and then let me. Let me multiply this Sn with R. Let's multiply with R, but I will write that multiplication down here. Okay. So let's multiply. So R Sn. Now we have AR plus AR cubed. Sorry, squared plus dot dot dot, and then plus. AR n minus 1 and then at the end we have the AR n because we move it a bit more. but I shift it a little bit to the right so that we can match up with all these two components between this uh, SN and RSN okay. and why, why we, did, we need to do this because I would like to to make this 
correlation between SN and RSN. So let's subtract them. So let's subtract this. So SN minus RSN is equal, so we can have a cancellation for all parts. So we have A minus A R with power of N. So SN And then we can write Sn is a 1 minus r with power of n over 1 minus r. Can you explain again what the difference between Sn and Rsn? The Rsn is just Sn multiplied by r. Just, just multiply. Okay. With? With R. So the RSN is SN, but I multiply all the terms here with R. Again. Again. Uh -huh. okay. This is actually interesting. Okay. The one who find this is, you know, Gauss. The normal distribution Gauss. The the Gauss elimination using the matrix. And he is also the one who finds this. I think when he was element in elementary school. Elementary school. I found this. I cannot imagine. I think when I was still in elementary school, I uh, I just have fun with maybe playing games. <laughs> Okay, now since we have this um, this R, okay, and we are, actually we 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 discuss something related to R before with the exponent, right? R with power of n, and then we we somehow know that if R or if the if the R is uh, equal one or greater one perhaps it will be getting infinite right from the um, from the sn so if we set up that r is between negative one to one okay then r with power of n will be close to zero when we increase the n It's the same as what we say before, like the the e with power of negative x, and then we increase x. We let take the limit, and then we have one over e with power of x like that, right? Now the same thing with r, which means that when we have r, n, or let's say the the we have the negative like that. Or maybe taking the numbers in between, maybe um, negative half. Okay. If this is should be this okay. like that. Okay. So if we take the limit, then for sure this is going to be an infinite or it's getting zero. So, let me write here. The limit as we take n approaching infinity of Sn. Then we can make this R of n equal to zero and then we can simply write that this is 
a over 1 minus r. So when r is less than 1, geometric series is converge convergent and the sum or maybe we just write here same with this But we need to be sure that the ratio need to be um, in between negative one or n one. And if r from equal one, and then you increase the r, the geo series will be like. Now you can see from the from the formula itself, if you get r at least one, at least one, there will be something over zero. Like it's it's not even makes sense, right? So that's why we need to make sure that the R is on this interval. And if you have maybe um, R equal to, it will be negative equal, which not makes sense. It's not making sense because we are going to plus all of that. So that is the geometric series. Okay, uh, maybe let's go for here, but before that, let me add some notes. If you want to write this, I think this one is um, important for the uh, geometric series. So as long as you can, um, you can formalize the this the, the series in terms of a r to the power of n minus one, you could directly go to a over one minus r. You get the sum. Okay, now let me explain about the the harmonic series. So harmonic series. So harmonic series is when we have one over n, okay, and then we are going to plus all the things when we input n okay. and then it will be increasing 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 so let's observe this harmonic series and then using the the partial sums okay so use the partial sum okay sn before our observations we are going to take only the even partial sums which means that we are going to check s2 S4, um, maybe 
just the two squared, maybe that will be very, uh, very interesting. We are going to observe this part here. So when we plug in S2, we have 1 plus 1 over 2, okay? When we have S4, this is 1 plus half plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 4. Let me put a bracket here. And this will be larger, will be larger than, let me write with green. It is larger than 1 plus 1 over 2. And then let's say this is 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4, right? So this is plus, okay. So what I would like to show you that the x4 is greater than 1 over 4, 1 over 4 is half, half, half is 2. So it's all this on the left is greater than 2. So we observe this 2, 4, 8, 16, so that we can compare with another part here that we can easily compute and make an uh, integer. To, to, to compute easily, so this is 2. So for sure, this S4 is greater than 2. Okay, let's see if we get S8, okay? So if we have S8, then it means that we have to add this. And let's still write with bracket for 1 over 3. And then plus, let me write in a bracket for all these terms here until 1 over 8. Okay. And then maybe, maybe let me get through on the left a little bit. And then we know that this will be greater than 1 plus, okay, all the all the terms is the same. The difference is only the, the last four. So it's 1 over, uh, let's say it's, it's 1 over 4. So we change all the, in the brackets. And then change with the smallest terms, which is 1 over 8. So 1 over 8, 1 over 8, 1 over 8, 1 over 8. This is just to make sure that it's easy to compute. 1 over 8, 1 over, uh, 1 over 4, 1 over 4, it's half, it's half, it's half, it's 1. Okay. So 1 plus 3 halves, right? So 1 plus 3 halves. So 1 plus 3 over 2. And then, that's uh, S8. So S8 is greater than that. Or it's 2.5, right? So it's 2.5. 2 and then, let's say we have the S16. Okay, then now it's getting... Uh, really large so let me just make some uh so one over five and then this is one over eight like that and then plus supposed to be one over nine one over ten one over eleven but i will skip that and then just write like this one over sixteen okay and you you will notice that on the right side when we change all the terms in the bracket with the smallest one, which is the uh, one over eight and one over 16, but we start from nine to 16, so nine, all, uh, almost uh, eight terms. So for, uh, if you compute, this will be one so before it's 3 over 2, okay. this is one, uh, 1 plus uh, 2 over 2. This is 1 plus 2 over 2. So you, you, I, I, I need to write in terms of that so that you can see the pattern. So this is 1 plus 2 over 2, 1 plus 3 over 2, and this will be 1 plus 4 over 2. 
now you will see okay that when we have let's say s32 this will be greater than 1 plus 5 over 2 when we have s64 this will be greater than 1 plus 6 over 2 so in general this s with n is 2 with power of n like that is always greater than 1 plus n over 2 so if we make n as large as possible okay if we make this n as large as possible if you if we just focus on the right side this will get infinite and this sn is always greater than this which means this sn will will diverge okay so the s will also and we can write here that the Sn will diverge, diverges. So we say that the harmonic series diverges. Okay. Please keep in mind this harmonic series because this is one series that will appear in a frequent case, in most cases. And also this is the series that we can compare easily because we know that the series will diverge. So S n will diverge. But if you remember the sequence, the sequence for 1 over n, or for 1 over x, we can take the limit is equal to 0. So we can have the sequence. But if we add S in the series, it will diverge. So you need to, to see the difference between sequence and series. I hope you get the idea of these observations. Okay, this is just, I just asked some comparable. Uh, so we, we take the S2, S4, S8, S16. Okay, why do we need that number, specifically 2, 4, 8? Because it is easy to compound and make it into the half, 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 okay? So 1 over 8, 1 over 8, and half, half, okay? And then it's easily to make this factor. Then we, somehow we can also make the conclusion that this, this part of S and is always greater than this. So when we increase this, this S for sure is we also increase, okay? So if we take the N going to infinite, then the S and will also get taken. So we say that the SN uh, will diverge. Okay, that's the, the harmonic series, okay? Okay, any question first? Any questions? Uh, so can you repeat again what is harmonic series? The harmonic series is just a name. Okay. So anything that is 1 over n, 1 over x, we call it harmonic. Okay. We can see that it's 1 half, 1 over 3, 1 over 4. We say this is harmonic series. Okay. This is the name. The definition is this. Yes. That this we call the harmonic series. And harmonic series will always diverge. It will always diverge. And, and like what? Why is The left one is where we have S2, S4, S8. Okay. So what I did is, 
I want to compare with some numbers, but I will change all the terms here with the 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 the, the, the smallest terms. Okay. So if we can make it smaller here. So for sure that this will be bigger. So I'm using this 2, 4, 8, so that I can make this half, and then later also half, half, and then easy to compare. If I may be using 1, 3, 5, maybe I cannot really make sure that it is going to be greater or not, because there will be some calculations. So if I take with this uh, 2, 4, I can change the the, the, the terms, all the terms here with the smallest terms, and then I can compute easily, and then I can get this pattern here. 1 plus 2 over 2, 1 plus 3 over 2, 1 plus 4 over 2. So it's interesting, anyway, uh -huh. because if, if not this pattern, maybe we are going to uh, maybe find it difficult to prove. Okay. But for this uh, interesting pattern, we take the two with power of n, and then we can we can easily switch the uh, the terms here with the smallest. Okay, so one over eight is six, <laughs> four. Okay. One over sixteen has eight. So this is half, half, half. Okay, let's take a break. Okay, so uh, this is how, how we prove it. And then the limit of the AN, because we have elaborated that AN is a fraction between SN and SN minus 1. So if we take the limit, if we take the limit for AN, this will equal to that okay which going to be s minus s which is zero so you could try this with any series that is convergent and then you could try some partial some of the partial sums and you will see that we are going to have the limit of the an will equal to zero. So any any series that is convergent, then you could conclude that the limit of that sequence is uh, zero. But how about the harmonic series? It's one over n. It's zero, but it's divergent, not convergent. Okay, so so uh, you cannot reverse. So if the limit is zero, how about the convergent or divergent? We're not sure. But if the series converge, for sure the limit should be zero. Okay, so you cannot reverse that. So let me maybe add some notes here. Then observe harmonic series. So we have a n is one over n. So as n getting larger, 1 over n is get, or maybe a n is getting 0. But from from our uh, conclusion from the previous page, we know that the series for this harmonic series is divergent. So if limit 
of the sequence is equal to 0, the series is unsure. It can be converged or it can be diverged. Which means that we need to take another method to check. But if we check the limit and then we get some value, it must be the diverged. It must be that. But if it is zero, then we're still not sure it's converged or diverged. We need to take another method. So another thing here is if the limit doesn't exist or the limit is not equal to zero, then we can make sure that the sum of the or the series is divergent. So these two uh, tests for divergence, this explanation, I think the divergence test will be uh, a very critical. Okay. Every time you see the series and you would like to check to check whether it's diverse or converged, the first thing you can do is take the limit. If the limit does not exist and maybe the limit has a value, you could directly say it's diverse. Okay. You don't need to under to use any, any calculation. No need for further calculation. You could just say okay it's diverse. For example, uh, check the series whether it's converged or diverge. Converge, diverge. Now you're just taking limit. Okay. You see the limit? We have this is n squared. Maybe let me let me make it clear. Okay. Okay, we have polynomial degree two, right? Polynomial degree two. So we get the limit is one over five, right? So it's not it's not equal uh, zero, and it is equal to some value, which means that this will be the effort. Okay. So we take the limit. So limit of the an and then limit so series is divergent. And by this you need to be able to distinguish between sequence and series. If it is sequence, if this is a sequence, then it will be not having any sum. If it is sequence, the sequence is converged, but the series is like.
And then some important uh, theorem, and I think this is also uh, easy to look at, is if we multiply by constant, we get factor constant. If it's plus or minus, we can separate. We can separate, it uh, becomes two uh, different sum. So for example, if we know that inside this sum here, we can make it into two terms, A and B. It means that we can, we can take it separately, and then maybe this is with some method, and then this will be another method. Okay. We, we, can, we can separate uh, this series. Okay, now we move to what we call the integral test. Okay. Let me add text here. Integral. Make it bigger. Okay. Before we deal with this integral test, okay. before, let's consider that the, um, the harmonic series is divergent, right? And harmonic series is one plus half plus one over three plus 1 over 4 plus that, 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 right? And then, let me write over here. Let me, let me write a little bit smaller. And then consider the other term that is 1 over n squared. So imagine that this is similar and but we are going to square all the denominators. So it will be 1 over 4, 1 over 9, 1 over 16. It seems that because the, the bottom equation will get enlarged, it seems that it is going to be, if we compute uh, the, let's say the area under this two curve, this one will be a lot smaller right? if we compare. So let's say we have 1 plus 1 over 4. Well, let me write 2 squared. So with the ge geometric arguments, we can make this one over x squared, okay. and then we take n equal one or x equal one is here. Okay, two, three, four. And it's going to be uh, getting closer, closer, closer to zero. Okay. But if we want to compute, okay like a sum, it means that we are going to take this, the rectangle from zero to one, plus rectangle one to two, and then so, and so forth, and so on. And we know that the, each area, we know the uh, result, right? And then, actually by defining some uh, integrations using the x goes to infinity, we can have an improper integral, right? I hope you still remember the improper integral. So this part can be written as one plus, so the area plus one. So integral from one to infinity of one over x squared dx, okay? Because the rectangle at the very first, we define that this already one Okay, so we are we are wondering what is the integration from one to infinite okay, for this uh, one over x squared. Okay, anyone still remember how to get this? We usually take this limit, 
maybe taking p to infinity and then 1 p 1 over x squared dx right and then the integral will be uh, we'll write again p this will be negative 1 over x right this is from 1 to p So we get that this was 1, right? This is 0. Okay. So we can say that this will be equal to 2. This is if we are using the um, integral okay, for, for this area. But we, we want to make sure that we have the exact uh, number, right? So the exact number, okay, so by taking So sum of the series of the 1 over n squared, 1 plus 2 squared plus 1 over 3 squared plus da da da. It will always less than 2. With the help of limit and improper integral, we can get it's equal to, but the the actual value will be less than two. And later, if you have time, you can also check that the Euler Euler found that this summation is about pi squared over six. Okay, the total one plus one over two squared, one over three squared is pi squared over six. Okay? But the proof is, I think, quite difficult to, to, to elaborate. Okay, from this part, okay, we could make some conclusion. Or maybe if you would like to try one more, maybe. So before we get conclusion here, if you would like to try, you could try to take the um, 1 over square root of n and the difference is within the square root this will be um, larger the area right because the square root of n will be maybe like that okay. and then this is one this is two Let's say two square of two is around here this is one is around Supposed to be supposed to be uh, supposed to be here. So it's supposed to be let's say this one here, and then we start from that part. 
one, two, and then the other part is going there. It's three, and then you can see the and so on and so forth. This will be one over square root of one. This will be one over square root of two. And if we compute this, so the total area is greater than if we compute the integral 1 over square root of x dx. Which we know from the p-test on the improper integral. Remember, we have the p-test. We check 1 over x with power of p, right? And if p is greater 1, or maybe let me just from p equal 1, is diverge. p greater 1 is converge. And p less 1 is also diverge. Or you could say p less equal 1 is diverging. So from what we have in previous graph, 1 over n squared, the n squared is the area is getting smaller and somehow intuitively we can say, within your intuition, you can, you can say, if we have 1 over x squared, but going nearby 0, then probably we can make some computation. But if this is like having a large scale like this, probably we are not going to, 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 uh, to compute that. We can't. We cannot compute that. And it will be going to be effort. Okay. So from these two examples, from 1 over n squared and 1 over squared of n, we can make some sort of conclusion that if we have a continuous function so suppose that we have a positive and continuous function and it is going to be decreased which means it's going down like the, the, the two curves that I mentioned and then we can let the a n as a function a function of n and the series will converge if and only if the improper integral is converging. So we need to, to check the integral. Okay. So if we know it's positive functions continuous and it's decreasing, we can take we can check the integral, the improper integral. So if we check the in integral and then it is convergent, then the integral converge, the series converge. The integral diverges the same is diverse, okay? You can also check this uh, using the improper integral, and I think it will be diverse. I give you some some hints using the p-test, like a shortcut to, to know whether it is converged or diverse by taking the improper integral. Okay. But how much does it converge? We don't know. We, are, we, we don't know the, the value, how much it's converged. You know. But we just we just say that okay, the integral we can find. It means that because the series will be larger than this, and this is converged, and we know that it's converged. But if this diverge, then it's the series will diverge. For example, if we if we check the integral and it's converged maybe some value, that value is not the same as the series value. Okay. The series value still we, we if, if if it's converged, we don't know how much is it.
so maybe let me write here that notes that the sum is not the same as the integral. And then because I, I I have told you this p test, let me just add some some p test here. So the p series. So if you have one over n with power of p, we will know the series will converge if p is greater than one, and it will be diverged if p is less than. Equal one. It's similar to what we have in integral, in, in proper integral. Let me to make it complete. This should be having an integral. Okay. okay, now I think the last one for today is the estimating sum. So consider that from um, integral test, we can show that the series can converge or diverge. Okay. But we, we, not, we don't know the value, right? So the, the next follow-up question is, can we estimate or approximate the sum? So the sum or maybe this the uh, the sum let's say s n will be approximated by limit s n equal s but this approximation of course it will have some error so how good this approximation depends on the error. So what what is error? So error we can we can make some definition. We call the remainder is the subtraction between S and S N. Okay. So the value that we approximate with the real value. And then we call this R is the remainder. 
is the uh, dif difference between this S and SN. And we can equal this to AN plus 1 plus AN plus 2 plus dot dot dot. So remainder, also let me write here, this is error when SN is used as approximation tools. To total sum. And so, I think let me write a little bit to the left and resize it a little bit. So, what does it mean is let's say we have a A curve like that. Suppose that this is function of x, and we are going to take this. Uh, this is n, n plus one, n plus two like that, and we have the rectangle under the curve. Now we can also make Rn equal a n plus 1 plus a n plus 2 plus dot 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 is always less equal than the, the, the value of the integrations, right? The area under, under the curve. If we get this curve, then we see that there is something missing, right? Then we, we for sure that this will be in the in the in, in below the curve. But we can also make the R is over the curve. So the error can be under or or over. But the, the thing is the R is the um, the, the differences. Okay. So we can also make another uh, graph maybe let me write here or maybe let me write in the next page So if we start from n, n, n plus 1, we say the rectangle. But if we start from n plus 1, we may have the rectangle that is over. Right? We start from n plus 1, and n plus 2 is also over there. Let me just write with different color. Okay? Let me use the different color here. Rn Okay, we have this too So 
So Rn can be between the blue curve or the blue rectangle or the red rectangle. So the blue one is below, the red rectangle is over. So the error, if we define the error as a, this missing link or the one that is over, then the R will be in between these two statements. So let me write in the new page. So remainder estimate. So suppose F is continuous positive decreasing function for x greater or equal n and the series is convergent if rn is s minus sn then So Rn can be overestimate like the uh, previous curve that showed the rectangle over the curve, or it can be lower than the uh, curve. But how we practically use this is basically trial and error. So we can try, maybe we need to find error 0 0.01 and then we need to check which, uh, what will be the end. Okay. Sometimes we get the, um, maybe we take some S, maybe we have to compute nine terms or 10 terms, okay. and we check, and how will be the error? You can check like uh, using the, some S and, okay, and then you check uh, how, how much is it. Okay. It's using trial and error. I will show you the example maybe later, but I think for now, I will stop the content up until here. Okay. We are going to continue later uh, from this remainder estimations. Okay. And now. Uh, I have prepared a post test. <laughs> just a simple question. This is a simple question, like usual. Just, uh, just like a, I think a, maybe three or f or four. I forget. Maybe three questions. Questions will be about the the polar and the sequence. Okay. Let me go to. Another slide. Okay. Oh, four questions. Okay, using the joinmyquiz.com, please enter the code 558626. Uh, use your student ID. Okay. Use your student ID. Use if it's asking name, just use, use your student ID. It will um, helpful for my uh, data, so that I can also pick all these, these students and set in the uh, in, in my database.
Okay, this is also for your attendance. Okay. You ready? Okay, we can start. Okay, we can start now. the same they are the same the circle with radius equal to
be uh, in a good numbers usually. So you need to be maybe cautious, maybe aware. If somehow the if the result is is too complicated or maybe One more. Thank you. 